Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, I'm going to talk to you guys about my two Euro round of 16 match reactions. I want to start with the France-Belgium game first. Let me just start to say this right now. Let me just cook Belgium first because I have a lot to say in Belgium. Guys, this Belgium team. Dominic Tedesco, is, is, he's a terrible manager. He's a terrible manager because I look at this formation he set out. He's put a full force in. Why on the earth are you starting Vertonghen? I'm sorry, Vertonghen is washed. At the eight, at, in the year 2024, he cannot be starting at your center back. Left back, you got Diate. Right back, Castagne. Faiz. Faiz is also terrible. And then I look at that uh, wingers. You have Yannick Carrasco. I'm sorry, Carrasco was one of Belgium's worst players in the last year. That guy was awful. I, I It amazes me the guy is still starting. And the guy's in Saudi. I'm sorry, the guy is in Saudi, man. The guy is in Saudi. It, it's ridiculous, man. It's as ridiculous, you know. And she's not in Saudi, he's in UAE. But you get the point. Like, the guy is not even in Europe anymore, right? Carrasco shouldn't be starting. You have Amadou Onana that's a start. And then you and then you have Doku as left winger. And then your two strikers, Lukaku and Openda. Now, I understand why Openda started, because Openda has been good. And you play KDB as a number six, though. I'm sorry. KDB doesn't work as a number six. If you want to get the best out of KDB... You either you got to put him number ten. You have to put him number ten. Belgium should have done a four two three one. And you look at the players that are coming off the bench. Mangala is coming off the bench. I'm sorry, Mangala is not that good. Charles de Ketelaer, Lubaka. Why is um why is uh Bakioko not coming off? Why is Tillemans not coming off? Why is Trossard not coming off? You see, this is where I I I I, I, I Dominic just got to take a lot of blame. He was terrible at this lineup, and his substitutions paid were terrible. And guys, Belgium looks so bad. Guys, I've tried to watch as much international football as I possibly can. Guys, I even seen China, India be this bad. China, India were terrible. Belgium's build up play might be on level with those nations, which is disgraceful up considering the amount of talent Belgium have. You have KDB, you have you have Lukaku, you have Openda, you have Amadou Ona, you have Doku. But Belgium looks so terrible on the day. As for France, they were the better team. France were the better team by far, and we all know this. And France defensively were great. And Magnon made some few saves, but the thing for Fran and for the thing for France is that there's just not something right about that attack. Didier Deschamps has to figure out this attack, and I still don't understand why Giroud has not been coming out. Why is Giroud been completely frozen out the team? You could tell that Giroud. Drew is so important to this team. And I don't know how many more times I have to keep saying this to you. And I'm sorry, Marcus Duram just doesn't work for France. He just doesn't work for France. He just isn't that guy for France. And for, and for France, as I said, man, Rabio just suspended for the quarterfinals. Maybe it's a blessing because I thought Rabio was not that great on the day. Uh, Griezmann on the right wing eh, just didn't really work. And guys, France just needs so much more uh, creativity up front because the attack is just horrendous for France. Because you have 19 shots and only two on target is simply abysmal. And yeah, for France, as I said, man, they have to get the striker. Because, you know, Kualamani came off the bench and helped, got a, you know, got the goal there at the end. It was a bit of a deflection there, the own goal uh, there at the end by Vertonghen. And yeah, Belgium just didn't really... There's not literally a whole lot of chances for France. It was a very much May game. And both these teams, man, were so underwhelming. Guys, let me just show you guys the stats in the first half. One shot on target for France. One shot. So... My thing for France is that they're going to have to significantly improve if they want to win the Euros. Because their next game is against Portugal. And we'll get to Portugal in a bit. That could be a tricky game for France. Because while Portugal haven't been that great, France haven't been great either. So that's going to be a very interesting game. And as for Belgium, man, a round of 16 exit in the Euros. Uh, very disappointed. I thought Belgium, I had them going out of the round of 16 in my original bracket. But man, they really should be aiming for quarterfinals. Belgium, round of 16, I think is disappointing. They, at the very least, quarterfinals. And for France, got to the quarterfinals. And still, guys, France are yet to score a goal in this year's Euros by open play. The goals they have been scored have been penalties and own goals. So, France, man, is there... Because the thing about France is that what makes them so difficult is that they're so tough to be the knockout stage. They're so tough to beat. If you beat France in the knockout stage, you have to give it your all. Like Portugal did in Euro 2016. Like Switzerland did. They pushed... Both these teams had to push it all the way to 120 minutes, respectively. So, my thing with France is that if, you get, if they're going to get knocked out, it'll probably be against a very good team. But if they're... they're so, for France, as I said, man, defensively, pretty good on the day. Belgium didn't really create much good opportunities in that attack. 
KDB had a chance to the the eighty second minute. I think after sorry, right after Belgium, France took the lead. And yeah, KDB, man, just Lukaku, just KDB, just not good enough, man. I, I really do feel bad for KDB because I thought KDB, in my opinion, might be Belgium's best player in the Euros. But he's just been let down by the fact that his other national team, the other players are just bricks. I'm just keeping a stack with you guys. And I will give credit to one thing for Belgium. They were defensively good, which is something that's pretty uncor- which is something I didn't expect Belgium to be. Belgium defensively been pretty good in the Euros. It's just been the attack that's been really bad. So kind of the same with France. So I, would, I do want to apologize for that uh, analysis I said in my predictions video because I was kind of pretty much clowning Belgium's defense, and I'm apologizing for my uh, brick take on that. But I, I, do, I won't apologize how bad Belgium's attack is because Belgium's attack is horrendous. Anyways, let's move to the next game, guys. Let's move to the next game we got here. It is um, Portugal nil, Slovenia nil. Portugal, man, they do it the hard way. Roberto Santos, guys, Portugal will not play good football. If you think Portugal will play good football and end roster tournaments, get that off your brain. Get that off your head. Because Portugal just doesn't play good football when it comes to high-pressure knockout games. And this was a game where Portugal could have easily lost. This is a game where Portugal could have lost. Because you could tell that by in the first half, Portugal were the better team. They were creating so many chances left, right, and right, left, right. And Slovenia were very, very, they are keeping their shape. And Slovenia came into this game with a plan. They wanted to defend as a unit and hit on the transition. Because Slovenia had some good chances, guys. In the second half in particular, Slovenia could have easily taken the lead right here, guys. This chance right here, Sesko, the 61st minute. That was a huge opportunity. And obviously, Charon as well. And for Portugal, as I said, man, Ronaldo had some chances. Obviously, Vitinha had the chance there. Um, Paulinha had the effort there before halftime. Silva, um, and then Ronaldo had the effort the 89th minute. Ronaldo should be scoring that one in the 89th minute. And yeah, uh, Vitinha, Ronaldo, and then an extra time, man. Comes a big decision. The penalty. The penalty. And for me, this was a... a, a, a some would say it's a soft penalty. I kind of understand why the penalty was given. Because it was a big collision. And upstart Ronaldo. And he misses the pen. And at that moment, I'm like, oh my jeez. I did not expect O Block to make that kind of save. And O Block, man, comes out clutch. He makes a huge, crucial save to deny your man, Christian Ronaldo. Then a second half extra time. Portugal kept pushing, Portugal kept pushing, and the Slovenia had a goal, Slesko had a golden opportunity to finish it off there in the 115th minute after a miscue at the Portugal defense by Pepe, and it goes to Pens, and shout out to Diego Costa. Diego Costa came a clutch, made some big saves and penalties, made three saves, and that is incredible, guys, because I, because the last time a keeper's made three saves in a row consecutively, was in the Confederations Cup 2017, where Chile won against Portugal. And it's funny, it's like, that was against Portugal, now it's, it's for Portugal. So it was like the other way around this time, you know? And I think for Portugal, as I said, man, they played well in the day, but my goodness me, the attack for this team is so, so one-dimensional. And I said this before, guys, I'm going to continue to say this again. Portugal shouldn't be relying on Ronaldo to score the goals for them. Portugal needs, uh, because the thing is, Ronaldo had an okay game. You can't expect Ronaldo to be that clinical and that guy for you in the year 2024. If Portugal wants if, if Portugal wants to go far, they cannot rely on Ronaldo single-handedly. Because Ronaldo is not at that age to carry this team at that level. We need to see the other players step up. Leal, I thought, was great on the day. I thought Leal had a fantastic game. Bernardo Silva was awful. The guy was awful. I didn't even know it was uh, uh, Bernardo Silva at all. Bruno Fernandes, um, I thought he was good, decent. Uh, Paulinho I thought was great in the midfield. He was winning a lot of interceptions, making those lost tackles. Uh, the Vitinha was good. Pepe was pretty much good for the most part, although he had a miscue at the end. Almost costed his team. Dio Costa, obviously great. Diaz, Cancelo, Nuno Mendes. Guys, Portugal need to start. We need to see more from the wingers. And one thing I've been very critical of Portugal is that the wingers aren't direct. The wingers are too one-dimensional. And I feel like for Portugal... They need the wingers to be direct because when the wingers are direct, that's gonna call that's gonna help them go far. Because for me, for Portugal, I look at that match against France in particular. Portugal have to set up better tactically because they can be France guys. This France team isn't that amazing, you know. But if they don't set up tactically correct, they're gonna fail. So my thing for Portugal is that they have to make sure the wingers are direct. They can give you those goals. Because that's the issue. It's just you can't rely on Ronaldo. I'm sorry. Ronaldo just isn't that guy, man. He just isn't that guy to be that clinical. Now, I'm not saying he shouldn't be bent. I'm saying he should still obviously be starting for the national team and still have a large prominence. 
But Ronaldo is, I think, I think to get the best of Ronaldo, I think he's better as a facilitator rather than a goal scorer for this team. And I feel like the wingers have to step up in terms of goal scoring. That's just my opinion. I know many people will get mad at me in the comments. will say, why don't you just say Ronaldo should be scoring the goals? I just feel like for me, for Portugal's sake, it's better that the wingers take more responsibility and Ronaldo can be that more facilitator. And obviously, Ronaldo has huge character, huge leadership. And yeah, man. So shout out to uh, Portugal, man, for making it through to the quarterfinals. And they set up a clash with France. And Ronaldo, as I said, man, one thing I want to say before I round off, please do not take free kicks because your free kicks at the age at at this at the year 2024 is you're simply not good at free kicks. You're simply not good at free kicks. And please, Ronaldo, please stop. And also, one more thing I want to say before I round off, Ronaldo, I know you missed a penalty in 100 and the extra time. The game isn't over, so don't cry. Don't cry, man. Wait until the game is over, and then if you and then if it costs you, then you could cry. Don't cry at the moment, man. There's still more to the game, man. Anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Please let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.